يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أما بعد We'll continue inshallah ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of you with his blessing and give us inshallah the strength to work uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and jazakum uh, Allah khair for everyone here inshallah uh, The just we were at the fear and hope and the love love of Allah fear and hope and we said as Ali Imam Al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala described someone he's traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flying the body will be the love and the wings will be one for fear and one for hope to keep the balance the firm connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the third provision the third third requirement as a provision for the believer to strengthen the, his heart, to be uh, perseverant, to gain and uh, to, to have that patience so he can uh, travel safely, firm on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the pleasure of Allah. The firm connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-ittisal al Al-ittisal al this firm connection with Allah, uh, is expressed by the complete reliance on Allah. In uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in all the affairs, and as described in the following ayah. Yeah. So, the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the heart really of the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, it's like how more you feel it, uh, you feel the tawakkul, tawakkul. The tawakkul, you know, you truly trust in Allah, you truly rely, uh, rely on Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Anfal, the believers are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, their hearts become fearful, and when His verses are recited to them, it increases them in faith, and upon their Lord they rely. The ones who establish prayer, and from what we have provided them, they spend, it is they who are the believers in truth. For them are grades of dignity with their Lord and forgiveness and a generous provision. These are really the characteristic of the true believers. The da'iyah connection to Allah uh, uh, in his trust on, uh, on him subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is like a child with his mother. Is like a child and this is a good example uh, to see like the parable, you know. The da'iyah, his connection with Allah is like a child with his mother. He does not know any one but her, the child, uh, and is not attached to anyone but her, does not seek peace and safety in anyone but her, and does not depend on anyone but her. So this is kind of a parable how the scholar, they give the image of one connected fully and completely to Allah. You want safety, go to Allah. You want tranquility, go to Allah. You want someone to help you in defending you know, your cause, go to Allah. Of course, the cause that related to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This connection is strengthened by the certainty that the creation does not hold for itself or to other creation or benefit or harm and that all the matters are in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just to go back to the hadith of Ibn Abbas, be mindful of Allah, Allah be mindful of you. Put a, be mindful of Allah, you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always toward you, helping you, that is the feeling of that hadith, implementing that hadith, that really expresses the true connection uh, of the da'iyah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not right for a believer to think that the success of da'wah is achieved by victory or triumph over enemies. And this is what we have been talking. So look at this ayat here, or do you think that you will enter paradise while such a trial has not yet come to you as came to those who passed on before you. They were touched by poverty and hardship and were shaken until even their messenger and those who believed with him said, when is the help of Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, unquestionably the help of Allah is near. So how near is the help of Allah? How near is the help of Allah? So the near here is not to be expressed in time nor in distance. But near based on the decree of Allah, near 
based on how much you have achieved within the will of Allah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for you. Look in this ayah, he said, to the point that the messenger, he will feel like that's it, it's the end. That's it, it's the end. Everyone is going to be destroyed. Everyone is going to be defeated. This is like death. Like Musa alayhi salam seeing uh, Fir'aun, that's it, they said, it is the end. He said, no, Allah is with me. Allah is with me. That the certainty that we, that the believer need to, to uh, get his power and his strength from the book of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us a story, not to just generate, you know, as a story, uh, like, you know, uh, things happen like simple narration. No, this is the Quran. Uh, this is beautiful word. Please uh, memorize it. The Quran teach you your life. The Quran relate on you your own life. So the story of Musa is like your story. And what Musa Allah uh, did by the will of Allah is to teach us that even if you are facing the biggest of the calamities and you are facing a, a sea and you don't have any way out, remember that Allah is your refuse, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, look in Surah Al-Hajj. Indeed, Allah defends those who have believed. Indeed, Allah does not like everyone treacherous and ungrateful. And Allah will surely support those who support him. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in mind. The sincere da'iyah never gives up hope in Allah, never. And this is what Allah reminds us when Ya'qub alayhi salam said to his children, go and find out about Yusuf and his brother and despair not of relief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, no one despairs of the relief or the hope of Allah except the disbelieving people. So the da'iyah, whatever happened, whatever subhanAllah the lowest that you can see this whole world, as long as you're still breathing, you know the light is out there. The guide is in the hand of Allah. The help in the hand of Allah. And the Hadith Qudsi, he said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to his servant, he said, uh, Ya Abdi, Ya Abdi, if the whole heaven and the earth, they all turn against you, and they come you know, to just intending to crush you, heaven and earth. Oh, my servant, I'll find a way out for you. So this is a hadith to help the believer, the da'iyah, because there is trial, like Yusuf, alayhi salam, innocent, he stayed years in the prison. But look how he end his life, alayhi salam. This connection is crucial to the da'iyah as it eases his affairs, reduces the pain, and eliminates the fear of the people from this heart. So this connection is actually that power who help him or help her to be strong, to continue persevering and work in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we're talking about that, uh, remember Noah, remember Ibrahim, remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in the beginning of the da'wah. So what we're doing is really very luxurious da'wah. I mean, sitting on a booth and people that they come like, look at you mean. I said, Alhamdulillah, nobody, you know, hit you or uh, rocked and I was tell you, telling you. But Alhamdulillah. So, so the, those are our inspiration. And how can you stand firm by the will of Allah, of course, is to have this provision, as we said. So, uh, again, the three, Al-Iman, Al-Fahm al Accurate Understanding, Al-Iman, Al-Wathiq, or uh, the, the Iman, the Strong Iman, Al-Iman Al-Amiq, and then Al-Ittisal Al-Wathiq, the Strong Connection with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Those are the true provision of the day. That's what we, uh, all of us need to work on. As you said, being righteous is not an option for the believer. It's like uh, an, a goal, uh, that uh, every one of us uh, must attain, insha'Allah, by the help of Allah. The morals of the day, you know, in brief, truthfulness, patience, mercy, modesty, interaction and seclusion, and this is, is a beautiful balance here. Uh, truthfulness, of course, in the intent, speech and action, 
speech to say the truth and refrain from falsehood in speech because uh, the worst of the thing is lying. And lying uh, changed the, 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 the way of perception. And if the way of perception change, then someone will be, subhanAllah, of the path of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet, sallallahu they told him, can the mu'min believer can be a coward? He said, yes. Can be a liar? He said, no. Hmm? Truthfulness is the, uh, you know, the, the, the peak into the character of the believer. Uh, just uh, all this subject is like a reminder, you will have them in the notes, because every title or small title require, uh, you know, a whole lecture. But for us, patience, for example, patience is not what you need in calamities, difficulties. Patience, you need it in every aspect of your life. Actually, you need the patience in obedience of Allah more than the patience needed in difficulties. Like here, patience on performing acts of obedience, of refraining from sinful acts and on facing calamities. So the most important patience is on the obedience. Have patience to, to do the prayer, help you to have khashua. Patience in attained, uh, is attained by the help of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be patient. And actually, your patience is only be attained. وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ uh, patience is driven by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can go back and read these small notes, inshallah. The mercy and humbleness, I mean, this is the characteristic of the Prophet sallallahu Not being merciful, that cannot be the way of the day. Uh, the mercy, it needs to be Allah is the most merciful. The Prophet sallallahu is mercy to the words. The Quran is the mercy to uh, and the guidance. So the bearer of this glad tidings, he need to be himself or herself merciful. And we said, you know, you look at the people uh, as, you know, the servant of Allah and you intend them to help them uh, come to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, being harsh causes people to avoid the da'iyah. The da'iyah who lacks mercy should uh, fake it until he make it. This is, uh, <laughs> this is uh, like... Uh, uh, in a way, uh, like uh, Imam Al Ghazali said, if you if you read the Quran and and you don't cry, so fake the crying for your heart to to learn for later on have some tears. So when someone he is harsh, like you know, train to be mercy, even though you're not, but it's gonna come. You know, uh, modesty it is. I mean, the opposite of modesty, arrogance, and arrogance is the seed of kufr, is the seed of kufr. Arrogance uh, makes someone not see the truth and belittle others. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said, the meaning of arrogance. Arrogance is like your opinion is the opinion. Everybody else is false. And that's, it does not go with the, with the, with the da'iyah. You have all these notes, inshallah. The da'iyah must be modest since he's calling to the path of Allah. From the modesty of the day is to obey the ones that the Islamic law requires him to obey, uh, you know, like elders, scholars, uh, uh, etc. Interaction and seclusion is to interact to the people because you're going to be, uh, you know, calling people, helping people. So interaction is, is required. Uh, the, to interact to seclude or to be like alone, secluded, so how can we do the balance here? Qal, it depends on the state of the person and his place and time. Interacting with people is obligatory with the extent required for conveying the message of Allah. Otherwise, interacting with people could be permissible, dislike it, or prohibit it. The da'ya should love the people surrounding him in accordance to their obedience to Allah and should dislike them in accordance to their sinful acts. And this is very important. Uh, the believer, he does not hate people. He hates the action in people. He loves his brother. I mean, you know, respect his sister. That's the, the relation of the iman. Those who, even Muslim, doing bad, he should not say, I hate these people. Say, I hate the action that they do. Because these people, if they do repent, they become cleansed like, like the person who's, who's cleansed. Uh, 
So this is very per important even in our da'a. When someone, for example, Allah called the, the, the ungrateful, najas, impure. The impurity in them is the action, is their belief. But the, the, the time they, they change their belief, they become pure. So you cannot have this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that person. Allah loves for that person to come to his path. So the believer being merciful, uh, a loving person, you know, kind, loving person, he hates the action. So you are reacting against the sin, the, the evil thing that the person he is doing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amazingly, I'll show you this A is very important to refer to in Surah at tawbah It's amazing A. And this is what, you know, make many, uh, you know, thinkers and uh, from, from other faith to, to be mesmerized by stopping by this A. Look, here, look, read. Um, they do not observe toward the believer any pact of kinship or covenant of protection, and it is they who are the transgressors. Huh? So these people, they really want to hurt the believer. They want to kill them. They, it's like they are oppressor. However, however, فَإِن تَابُوا Look, but if they repent, establish prayer, and give zakat, then they are your brothers in the religion. Right away, look. Yeah. Nine ten talking about, you know, killing and oppression. فَإِن تَابُوا So these people, what they're doing is bad. Subhan so the, the substance, the true soul is created by Allah is good. But if you fill that soul with impurity, it becomes impure. If you cleanse that impurity, then it comes back to its origin. Huh? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligates you to treat them as your own brother. The uh, da'iyah should love the people, the day should choose the ones who are obedient to Allah and are committed in worshiping Allah as companion. That's important also. This is the friendship of the day, the circle that will help him in his path to have righteous people like him or like her or people who are like better than us to, to learn from them, to be inspired, etc. Recommended seclusions are four types. At the time that is recommended to perform a specific act of worship, uh, such as praying at the darkest of the night. So the seclusion is very important for the life of the believers, especially the day. The seclusion is like to take that time for yourself. It's very important. People today, they call it the me time. Huh? <laughs> now we call it time of reflection, of ibadah. That time, subhanAllah, give you a lot of power, a lot of strength. Because when you take those moments of reflection, of thinking, and the Prophet Sallallahu he taught us to do it. He said, woe to the one who listened to this ayat and he will not reflect on them. So the reflection and the, the, the contemplation, it is a requirement in the Sharia. It's one of the, you know, most important ibadah. So take the time of the night to pray, that requires seclusion. The day he needs to stay away from people to rethink his plans and coming back with the greater strength to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, calling countable, see what, how he did, things like, uh, like that. To have a spiritual seclusion if sitting in a place where people are backbiting or talking ill, talks and cannot leave. Sometimes someone in a place that he cannot leave, so he'll make his own seclusion if people, because he doesn't want to intermingle with people that they are doing sins. Eh? To stay away from the non-believer if the day I realize that they are too far from answering the guidance. I mean, talking about here and grateful, you know, talking about, you know, in the way of Dao, not at the work or things like, you know. So if people, they are far from the da'wah, and this has happened many times, sometimes you're talking to people that come to the masjid, and you feel like they really came to the masjid to make da'wah on you, many of them. Then these people, you know, you should not continue to, to, to be, because they're very far from the guns. I mean, being kind to them, nice to them, but to continue relation when they always send you an emails which is like hurtful emails, 
talking about this is not true, this is... So uh, when someone is far from the, you know that far, that's when peace comes. That's when peace comes. Uh, to Isha time, inshallah, I'll ask your patience to uh, go through the presentation and we'll take some questions. Fadl. I was just wondering, shall we invite them to the Quran to, to reflect on Quran to those people? Because once they start Quran reading and understanding, those misconceptions will go away by time. I mean, that's one of the uh, strategy to offer them Quran if they want to read the Quran. But uh, Allah telling us in the Quran that there's people, the more they read the Quran, the more they deny the Quran. It's in the Quran. وَلَيْزِيدَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تُغْيَانَ وَكُفْرًا وَلَيْزِيدَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تُغْيَانَ وَكُفْرًا Many of them, what, what Allah revealed to you, it increased them in denial and in, 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 in gratefulness. So the Qur'an is guidance. But the one who does not have the key for that guidance, the more he reads the Qur'an, the more he gets farther from the Qur'an. Based on their intention. Their intention. Or their belief. Their, you know. So to give the Qur'an, it's, it's always, you know, someone said, this is our book. If you, if you have time, you want to read it, you know. And that's, that's the way. But we don't, we should not think that the Qur'an is going to change them. You never know. Maybe the Qur'an is going to make them, keep them farther. That's why, Thinking about the impact that we're going to have on the person is not the right strategy or the right way. Convey and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our intention, our dua for them, because one of the things, when you make your action, make dua. Because many of, of the time, we rely on our skills. He make dua. As soon as you say, Ya Allah, open the heart of this person. Because he intending good. Make dua with your dao. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help whomever uh, we are, uh, help, uh, you know, talking to. Um, we, inshallah ta'ala, we finish briefly with what I have uh, promised you. The presentation, uh, this presentation will be presented on the 27th, inshallah ta'ala. But just to give you an idea, eh? just to give you an idea. No, not, not this one. So you see the, the all what we, what we have presented in this class. So this is the presentation. Um, okay. So, inspiring from the class and uh, looking at the system of Islam, you know, and you want to present Islam. So presenting Islam first as, as the mercy. Because think of everyone, what he's, you know, wishing in his life. He's wishing happiness, success. And happiness and success, its foundation is truly mercy. So when you present the system of Islam, which is truly the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as a mercy to the world. So let's talk about our deen, the way we love it, and the way it is not the way it's practiced, and not the way to defend it. That's the idea. Let's talk about the deen, the way we love it, not the way to defend it, and not the way it's practiced by Muslims. And we have not sent you, and you will see everything is from the Qur'an. And we have not sent you, but as a mercy to the world. The message of Allah, God, is the mercy for mankind. Uh, 
uh, who is Allah is the oft forgiven full of loving and kindness he honored mankind look in this one we are representing the vision of life of Muslim of Islam who is Allah you know the other faith they have a problem with forgiveness they need the Savior to wipe the sins and when you present Allah you already answer a question crucial into their mind you say that he's the oath for giving the full of loving and kindness oh this is their God now honored mankind so mankind is not someone who came by mistake mankind is being honored and it's not there is no like a group of people being honored and other no this is here you're talking about equality you're talking about mankind the people who's not Muslim he's he's here in this a verily we have honored the children of Adam we carry them on the land and the sea and have made provision of good things for them and have preferred them above many of those whom we created with the market preferment now here we are presenting the value of the humankind of the human being in this life uh, provided for them and showered them with his blessing so this is Allah's this is what we are talking about the Lordship the Rububiyyah you remember the base we're talking about the Rububiyyah and the Rububiyyah is not limited to the believers the Rububiyyah for the whole creation then you're presenting a system that's universal here huh? see the universality in this ayat Allah is who created the heaven and the earth and sent down water from the cloud then brought you forth with his fruits a sustenance for you you see the end in line we end the line for you so the one who's in the attendance he look he gonna be like addressed you address him to him and he has made the ship subservient to you um, river subservient to you and he has made subservient to you the sun and the moon and in the same time, they are reading something shocking, mesmerizing, beautiful. You see that? So let the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to them. And everyone who's reading this, he's been relating to his own self. This is all talking about mankind. And look, and if you count Allah's favor, you will not be able to enumerate them. Most surely man is very unjust, very ungrateful. This is the nature. This is what you see in the world. Now, the thing is, look at the next slide. Yet, the ungrateful of man, to the ungrateful of man, Allah is forgiven, merciful. So here, like you break the whole system of faith of any other faith. Where they have, you know, kind of question mark about the forgiveness. And then you bring the words of Allah to tell us. And if you will count Allah's favor, you will not be able to enumerate them. Most surely Allah is forgiven, merciful. And by the way, this is one of the beautiful ayat. This one in Surah Ibrahim, the same ayat. The same ayat. It ends by man is very unjust and ungrateful. In Surah Al-Nahl, with the surah of the gifts, the surah of the blessing. Allah mentioned the same ayah and we inta'uddu ni'mat Allah la tuhsuha but what he said he answered the ungrateful of man by his forgiveness most surely Allah is forgiven merciful say O my servant who have transgressed against themselves by sinning do not despair of the mercy of Allah indeed Allah forgives all sins indeed it is he who is the forgiven the most merciful now you see in this society here you already answered all the question mark about the faith. Everything. And believe me, whoever who has issue with forgiveness, he wished that he had these words in his scripture. The lives of men, this is shocking, always shocks people. <laughs> the lives of men, we believe that we have five lives. And this is how you present it, like subhanAllah, why we say like eternity, you present it like stages. When you present this, then you're going to design a purpose of life based on this. 
And remember, we study this already in the vision, vision of life of the Islamic vision of life. So, and then we already mentioned this. So the first life is uh, to be uh, before we come to this world and gave you life. This is second life. And again, he will cause you to die the third life, which is the life of the grave. And again, bring you to life, fourth life, which is the resurrection and the day of judgment, which is as long as this life on this world and then you should be brought back to him, which is the fifth life, the eternity that Allah created us for. So the Muslim, he looked at this and uh, said, okay, so this is number two, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, you know, this is your purpose of life, like, like fifth life. Based on that, what is the role of humankind in the creation? Uh, one is vicegerent on earth entrusted with the mission of achieving well-being in the universe. Look how you put the objective of Islam, high objective that everyone is wishing to have. Every philosopher in the whole history, he trying to solve this. Every system built by humankind, they want or they claim that they want well-being and welfare. And this is, you'll find like every human being indeed in Islam, that is mission. It is indeed the righteousness of humankind which leads to the well-being of the universe. And this is, we have mentioned as uh, subhanAllah, the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala principle and will in this system. So the system of the universe breathes, the breathing is righteous action. That's why in the pillar, in the base we have, is the rightest action. With our rightest action, you change the world. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the teacher of the good, you know, everything in the whole creation is asking forgiveness for him. The angel asking forgiveness for him. He said the Prophet, even the fish in the sea is they asking forgiveness. Why? Because his rightest action is changing everything in the universe. And that's our belief. Behold, your Lord said to the angel, I will create a vice gerent on earth, which actually other faith, they have a difficulty to understand this vice gerent uh, because they do not have that comprehensive uh, vision uh, of the life of, of a human being in this universe. Uh, all mankind were created from single pair of male and female uh, that you may know each other. So you see how Islam is to know each other. This is the purpose of the creation too, you know, to know each other. So also here we are answering another question. Tell me, show me where is violence in Islam? And do not do mischief on the earth after it has been set in order and invoke him. So this is the mission of human being in Islam. So where the mischief? Uh, what is the purpose of the creation uh, of the life of this world? It is better test. So this is how we believe. So you see, you structure it slowly. You show the purpose of life. And then the purpose of the life that we live here. So it's a test. So as a test, how are you going to, if you're going to take an exam, how are you going to take this exam? You want to be uh, successful. So you want to study your test. Indeed, we have made that which is on the earth adornment for it, that we may test them, which of them is best indeed, and verily we should make all that is on it, the earth a bare, dry soil. Huh? The true life is the life of the hereafter then, what is the life of this world but amusement and play, but verily the home in the hereafter that is life indeed, if they are but new. So this is, this is, you see now, our purpose of life becomes very clear. The purpose of life then, and they have not created the jinn and the humankind except that they should serve me. I do not do, uh, I do not desire from them any sustenance to the end of the age. All you who believe, bow down, prostrate yourself, worship your Lord, and do good that you may be successful. And believe me, uh, the way I mean, the, in the all the uh, uh, meeting we have with the uh, with the non-Muslim, always it was like mesmerizing for them to learn Islam has all this, uh, you know, uh, heavy, if you can say, knowledge and strong system. Mm. Uh, this is just to see uh, why the eternity and why it is test and how, what to drive the believer to always think 
about the hereafter. Uh, this is the ayah, Surah Al-Infitar. Uh, every soul should know what is has sent before and held back. O man, what has made you careless concerning your Lord, the bountiful who created you, then fashioned you, etc. The path to success. So how, as a believer, uh, we get to our success. Whoever works righteousness, men or women, uh, and has faith verily to him, will we give a new life, a life that is good and pure. So in this one, we, we put something in this area, the equality between men and women. So while you're talking to them about the purpose of life, while you show the path of success, you already show them the equality between men and women that Allah is talking about. And whoever does righteous deeds, whether male or female, while being a believer, those will enter paradise. So why you tell me why they wear hijab and why the woman this and this uh, said look at the quran we are equal in every action when it comes to the action of the dunya we complement each other we don't fight so what it comes to is how can we have a household how can a society will be like you know coherent with the full cohesion you are better than me in this task will you please do it i will do this but when it comes to the path of Allah, we are equal in deeds. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in these two ayat, the mercy of God is to provide humankind with the way, the means, and the ease to achieve happiness and well-being in this life and in the hereafter, to cherish, watch over, and protect him. And that is the message of Islam. See, so here you almost answered all the question about the faith, about equality, about the purpose of life. And you give like a whole, uh, you know, information, a lot of structured, strong. And this is really already, uh, mashallah, you presented in Islam in the, in the best way. And this is, as I said, inspired from the class that we have. How to achieve it? So it's not like, you know, just to, to accept a savior or to be like from a group and that's it. No, there is, there is a way how to achieve. The pillars of faith that all of you know. Uh, believe in Allah, we, we took this slide to, to show who is Allah, the one, the unique and comparable God who has no son, no partner. So uh, again, uh, we present here, you don't say, for example, in a way to attack, you know, other faith by saying, you know, oh, God cannot have a son, you are wrong, you are kafir. Look, we, this is our pillar of faith and his, this is the God that we worship. He does not have son. Say he is God, the one God to whom the creation turned for their needs. He begets not, nor was he begotten. Believe me, no one asking about Jesus or the Son or anything. Because you already presented in a very strong way, alhamdulillah. Uh, the other believe the angel books and then, you know, in very few, uh, you know, comment on that. Uh, the pillars of Islam build the structure of the way of the action in a life driven toward goodness. So that's why we have the pillars of Islam. So you give them the purpose. So you have the faith in your heart. And then how you're going to implement it, you have as a structure. The structure is have a pillar. And this pillar will help us to be driven toward goodness. So you give them everything with wisdom. And they see like the Muslim, they have very thing like, you know, very structured well organized and with focus and goal and purpose. <coughs> Declaration of faith, uh, the purpose and the way uh, of life, the basis of all the action uh, of the heart and the body. As I told you, it's from the drawing that, that we uh, share together. Uh, a prayer. So the prayer, what is the prayer? Serves as the backbone of the religion, nurtures of the soul. Zakat. Provide social justice, frees the soul. Fasting, reaffirms the oath, adds in gaining piety. Hajj completes the submission to Allah. It, it, you know, instead of saying the prayer five times and five rak'ah and we do four rak'ah, they, they don't relate to that. If you give them the purpose that they're missing themselves, nurture your own soul. Yeah, we, we need that. Or oh, they have it. That's why they have it five times a day. But we say like five times a day, I said, man, that's a lot of work. But when you're talking about nurturing your soul, that is required five times a day. 
for things like that. Um, implementation, first, here where we introduce the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, as in the whole structure that is needed, is part, following the footsteps of the Messenger of God. And then you have indeed in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one, and this is a ayat about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And you see how uh, the Prophet sallallahu is introduced as at the one structure who leading us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if you should love Allah, then follow me, Allah will love you. So the Prophet, he's the best of the creation because he's the best who loved Allah. Not because he's a savior, like they, or because he has attribute of the divine, wal billah. Uh, the second one is the jihad. And this is how the jihad is uh, introduced. So I want to be as good as, as I can, the maximum I can. How can I do it? I say, follow the Prophet Sallallahu Then I'm going to do my effort, struggle, strive to be the best in following him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the jihad. You already answered the bigger question that he has question mark in their mind say constant striving to persevere on uprightness and those who strive in our cause we will certainly guide them whoever hopes for the meeting with Allah then Allah's term is surely coming and he either and whoever strives is jihad you know so this is in the Quran uh, the last one is the remembrance so to keep always in state of dhikr and fear a day when you will be returned and you tell them this is the last ayah in the Quran uh, this is in brief, you know, the whole presentation and everyone, uh, I believe, uh, such a presentation uh, give uh, a whole perspective of the Islamic creed. Uh, of course, this is what we should be <laughs> and we're striving to be on this way. Uh, so this is an idea uh, or like an example uh, that we've been doing and presenting to, to non muslim so far, alhamdulillah, it was uh, relevant and uh, effective uh, because of the question that we hear. We don't hear any more like about, you know, women and sometimes or jihad and things because uh, everything is being presenting in this very coherent uh, way, alhamdulillah. And as I said, it's inspired from the uh, class that we have. Uh, all these notes for those who have access to the psychology, they are already there. So you have a copy of uh, of uh, the uh, or the presentation that I have, uh, and whoever who want to use it, uh, of course, you know it's it's for every Muslim looking forward to to make that. Inshallah. If you have uh, any question, Inshallah, tafadil bray. Now one second, I mean, Jazakumullah khair for your patience, and we're just waiting for Salat al Aisha. So we want you to. To also <laughs> have the azure of Salat al-Aisha. Jazakallah. The question is, the trainees who attended the presentation who not in the class, he was just itching, itching to know, um, like, because you were presenting to a, a, a Christian group, you were saying, why didn't you have uh, a, a, a slide just dedicated about um, no like you have guests and that's what they believe that's their their core belief and you're gonna present them something nice to have them be peaceful. So we already said, Qul huwa Allah wa had is enough. Because that when you enter in a way is like provoking. We know. So even subhanAllah, we know the person who has the permission to marry, for example, a Christian, and in the Sharia, in the contract, you ask the person, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If she say yes, she said, okay, so this from Ahl al-Kitab said it's allowed to the person to, to marry her. Like this is one of the elements of the contract when someone. 
So we know that. But to, to present it to them, I wanted to show you that uh, Isa, it is already clear huh? in the oneness of Allah, in Qul Huwa Allah had begets not, not, uh, not his begotten. Okay? Uh, and that is actually one of the, of the message that you can uh, convey more meanings when they are all, all of them, you know, like they, they listen. When you put something that is really contradict openly with their creed, that's when you lose them. You know, we we were we were invited in a church, uh, sister, and to present the the presentation. And there's a, because before we start, you know, that, they were playing piano and uh, chanting. You know, for us we were like <laughs> everyone like was astaghfirullah. We have some sister say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So. When we did the presentation, there's a person like, you know, she's like waiting, say, I have a question. I said, what do you believe about Jesus? So I smelled, I said, you know, we love Jesus more than we love ourselves. But it's not about Jesus, it's about Allah. I said, if we say Jesus has a son, which means that Allah, for us, He's needy. And if He's needy, He cannot be God. That is our belief. That's it. Nobody ask any other question. But already the answer, that, you know, what is, what is about Jesus, if you hear in this slide. Because sometimes, you know, you give the information and you don't need to give a lot of details. Details is either going to provoke or is going to lose them when you already said it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, this ayah, which is the third of the Quran. When he said, Allah. Fina. I believe in Allah here. And look, the one and the unique and comparable God who has no son, no partner, and that none had the right to be worshipped but him alone. He is the true God and every other deity is false. He had the most magnificent name and sublime perfect attribute. No one shares his divinity nor his attribute. In the Quran, God described himself. Say he is God. Allah Samad. He begets not nor was he begotten. Why I have to talk about this? That's it. I mean, in, in a beautiful way, you tell them that you are wrong. I think you put another slide, he said this more. I, we already said it. Allah said it. Allah. Jazakumullah khair wa barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, help us persevere on the path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in the sharing of the knowledge that we have. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us his knowledge. Allahumma gfir lana dunubana ajma'in. Allahumma zidna ilman. Allahumma wafaqna wa zidna ilman. Wa barik lana fi ma allamtana. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to implement what we have studied. And uh, inshallah Allah shower you with his blessing. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima. Jazakumullah.